welcome to show us classes today we are going to be dealing with some very important questions on chemical sciences you can whatsapp or call us at the number given on the screen for any doubts queries or for full videos on our courses let's start off with our first question the stark splitting for a given field is larger for a molecule ax as compared to bx which one of the following is true let mu is the dipole moment the following are the given options now we find that quadratic stark shift equals del small v quadratic to quad equals to mu e by h whole square into 6 m j 8 j square minus 3 minus 8 j square j square plus 1 I'll write it in the next line so that it becomes easier for you minus 8 j square minus 1 whole divided by 2 b j into j square minus 1 into 4 j square minus 1 by 4 j square minus 9 that is stark splitting is directly proportional to mu square that is mu ax is larger than mu bx that is option number b now in the next question we are given two compounds we have to find out whether they are enantiomers, identical, diastereomers or regiosmers. Notice both the compounds are just mirror images of each other. That is they are exactly the same compound just inverted among the figure. Thus both the forms are identical that is option number B. Now let's move on to a bit critical sum. In a chemical reaction A in solid state and B in gaseous state and the resultant C is also in a gaseous state, the total pressure at an equilibrium is 6 atmospheric pressure. The value of equilibrium constant is among the following options. Let's write down the given equation. A S plus B in gaseous form. This is a reversible reaction C G. Now total pressure equals to 6 atmospheres now Pb equals to Pc therefore Pb equals to Pc equals to 3 therefore K equals to C divided by B equals to C by 3 which is equals to 1 that is option number C in our question moving on to the next one now as you might see I have already calculated the valence electrons of each and every element that we have from SF4, BF4 minus, HCF4 and ICL4 minus and we obtain that there are two lone pair of electrons in cases of xenon fluoride and ICL4 minus. Thus this corresponds with option number A in our question. Now the next question is a very important one. We need to find whether the following compounds are diamagnetic or paramagnetic antiferromagnetic or otherwise we are given nickel cyanide with two electrons and nickel chloride with two free electrons complex ions we need to figure out each of these compounds are diamagnetic paramagnetic or among the other options the outer configuration of nickel is 
एन आई इक्वल्स टू सी डी एट फोर एस टू निकल टू प्लस इक्वल्स टू थ्री डी एट फोर एस जीरो नाउ वील सी द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ निकल क्लोराइड एंड निकल साइनाइड नाउ दिस इज द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट निकल साइनाइड विथ टू बैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दस साइनाइड बींग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग शील्ड लाइग इन पेस ऑफ द अनपेयर डी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द कॉम्प्लेक्स हैविंग अ डाई मैग्नेटिक नेचर सिंस देर आर नो अनपेड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स प्रेजेंट द कॉम्प्लेक्स इज अ डाई मैग्नेटिक विद डी एस पी टू हाइब्रिडाइजेशन वेर एज ऑन द अदर हैंड क्लोरिंग बींग अ वीक फील्ड लाइग इन is incapable of pairing of the nickel unpaired electrons hence nickel chloride is paramagnetic complex with two unpaired electrons that gives its paramagnetic character with sp3 hybridization the hermitian conjugate of operator ddx called ddx star is actually equals to now let us given the operator a equals to del of del x therefore psi mod of a cap psi star is equals to psi star psi star with line from minus infinity to plus infinity minus integration of minus infinity to plus infinity d dx psi psi star dx this equals to 0 minus minus infinity to infinity d of dx psi psi star This equals minus psi star d of dx psi. Thus, a plus equals to minus d of dx. With this, we come to an end of another great video. Please like, subscribe, and contact us via WhatsApp or call. from the following number you can click on the notification button to receive new videos when we upload them